Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another video today. We are going to be doing another video about the history of an Outlast character. This character is Chris Walker. So, if you never played Outlast before, and you don't know what I'm talking about, I suggest you go watch my main walkthrough. Um, or, or anybody else's main walkthrough. Uh, but, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to be talking about Chris Walker. Uh, we talked about Richard Traeger last um, history video, so if you guys want to go check that out, link will be in the description. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, you know, do all that to support the channel. And as always, I'll see you um, in the next clip. Chris Walker has three nicknames. His first nickname is Big Fucking Guy. Second nickname, The Soldier. And the third nickname, Strong Fat. Miles Upshur calls him the big fucking guy in one of the notes that you see. Um, his career was the United States Military Police, um, affiliation Murkoff Corporation. Uh, he's deceased. He was born in 1978. He died at the age of 34 by the Wall Rider. September 18th, 2013, he died. Uh, he's male. He's six foot nine and a half. Uh, he has no hair and his eyes are far back and it's covered by white layer. And he's voiced by this guy named Chim... I can't say the name, but Miller, something Miller. Um, it, it kind of sounds like this. You were here, weren't you, little pig? I'll find all you horses. <sighs> okay, that was my best impression of Chris Walker. Uh, that was kind of cringy, right? I don't know. Uh, the background of Chris Walker, so, a document states that Walker is a man maniac exaggeration of military security protocol. So, as you can, as you can see, you know, he always likes, he always, uh, when he's stalking you, he, he, he always says, we have to contain it, or, um, or, uh, other things, I can't name it from the top of my head right now, but he says, uh, military security protocol, um, he claims the flesh ripped from his forehead allows for a true vision, true vision, I need to go to speak, Walker has no lips, no, um, no nose, uh, from extreme anxiety, uh, he is responsible for the deaths of various people inside the asylum, he killed employees and patients, uh, in an attempt to contain the wall rider, which Father Martin is trying to set loose upon the world. One of the notes reveals uh, that before being admitted to Mount Massive Asylum, Walker was an ex-military police, as well having toured Afghanistan several times. Um, so, so that that's his. Uh, that was his career. He was uh, he was an ex-military police uh, touring Afghanistan, you know, a lot of times, and he uh, was a security guard at Ma Mount Massive Asylum because um, we'll we'll say right now. Uh, so he's committed to Mount Massive Asylum. He was uh, hired as a security guard for Murkoff after returning from Afghanistan. Despite his st stature and his almost inhuman strength, Walker is a child like mine. He became a surveillance officer for the Spindle Top Psych Psychotherapy Clinic in, in Texas. There he was nicknamed Strong Fat, so that was his, one of his nicknames, by his colleagues, which he despised. At some point, Walker's psych had broke. He murdered three inmates. All were veterans. And the bodies of the victims were found. They had been brutally ripped apart. So when he, when they say brutally ripped apart, I'm going to take a guess and say their heads were ripped from their bodies. Because that's what Chris Walker does. As you can see from the characters, he, uh, characters, the people he kills in Not Massive Asylum, he rips everybody's heads off. Or most people's heads off. And he, he collects heads. <laughs> he collects his uh, victims' heads. Um, he wants to end the suffering, um, of, you know, other, uh, of, like, the people, because I, I think, I, like, it's kind of confusing, he's, like, I, trying to help, maybe, but he's not, I don't, I really don't know if he's trying to help or not, but he, he wants to end the suffering for people, so I guess that's good, I don't, I don't know. Um, so, uh, Ter Murkoff agents named Pauline Glick and Paul Mar Marion investigated three m the murders without involving the police. Eventually, they discovered that Walker was behind them with a fourth victim, Dr. Claymore, had been found in a therapy room. Realizing that this should have been recorded on security monitors, they visited Walker's control room. However, the monitors had been smashed. And since the only two people had access to the monitors, including Claymore and Walker, they figured that Walker was the one responsible. <clears throat> so that's smart. Walker <laughs> smashed the freaking uh, the uh, monitors. <laughs> so that's smart of you, Walker. Okay. So they headed to Chris's uh, residence, but he was not home. They found four colder boxes, three of which contained the heads of Walker's previous victims. So 
like I said, Walker collects his his uh, victims' heads as I think a trophy. I don't know. He's he's insane. Uh, when they discovered that one of the boxes was empty, they realized that he was bound to arrive home soon, and they waited for him. Jesus, Jesus. Meanwhile, they searched his house and found his childhood toy, a stuffed toy pig. So maybe, maybe, hold on. Maybe that's why um, Chris Walker calls Miles little pig. Little pig. Shut up, you bitch. Because his favorite, I would say his favorite animal and his favorite childhood toy is a pig. A stuffed toy pig. So, I I don't, I'm maybe that is why, I'm not sure, it makes sense. Um, shortly afterward, Walker arrived home with the head of his last victim. The officers immediately drew their guns and ordered him to stand down. However, seeing the investigators holding his stuffed animal, he lashed out at them. He threw Pauline to the ground and grabbed Paul by the throat. Holy shit. Oh my god. Pauline shot him several times in the face, screaming him horribly. In response, Walker dropped Paul and instead attacked Pauline, throwing her through a window. So, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Chris. Before Chris can kill her, Paul grabbed his gun and shot Chris several times, only for Chris to knock the gun out of the out of his hand and throw him in the window. So Chris is basically not human, okay? He's, he's like... How does he survive that? Um, as he approached Paul, Pauline got in his car, got in her car, and drove at Chris. The impact throwing him against a rock and knocking him unconscious. Afterwards, Walker was ap apprehended by two agents. As he was a Murkoff employee, the killings were blamed on another patient, Omar Abdul Malik, who received a life sentence in prison. Jesus. Walker, however, was not surrendered to the police, but instead committed to Mount Massive Asylum for expiration. Oh my god. That is intense. Okay, I did not even know that. I'm just, I'm, if you can tell, I'm reading off an article. I, I, I did not know that, m most of this. That, that's intense. Um, so two two months later, Pauline was called to the asylum where she met Jeremy Blair. So if you guys don't know who Jeremy Blair is, he was, um... He is a uh, Murkoff executive. I mean, well, Murkoff, I don't know. But he uh, played with Richard Traeger golf. He played golf with Richard Traeger a million times. Um, <laughs> and he was best friends with Richard Traeger. Um, yeah, he, he was in the uh, Outlast of Whistleblower. Um, I think, yeah, he survived. No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't survive. He died by the wall rider. Um, spoiler alert. How the fuck are you still alive? Oh, no, I, I was going I was literally gonna mention that guy. I was literally gonna mention that guy. No, I was so close. No one can know. No one. Yes, yes. The ghost got him. The ghost got him. Let's go, dude. So Blair showed Pauline Walker, who was not recognizable as a human anymore and had been turned into a monster. So, <coughs> Chris Walker is not a human. <laughs> he is really bad. Okay, so the characteristics of Chris Walker. So he is a very large and burly man who possesses superhuman strength and durability. He is able to easily pick up a fully grown man with one hand and even tear off someone's head from their body. So like I was saying, he, he tears people's heads off from their body. Uh, during an encounter with the Pauls, Chris displayed a high pain tolerance, withstanding multiple gunshots to his torso and jaw, as well being hit by Pauline's car. He's also surprisingly athletic for his size, running almost as fast as miles, and being over to leap over obstacles to get him. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, this is... If you if you played Outlast before, you when you're getting chased by Chris Walker, you can see that Chris Walker is just... He's, he's fat as shit. He's tall, but he's fucking fast. He's really, really fast, and he wants to, like, he just wants to kill you to end your suffering or something, like, I, I don't know, he, he, he does, he can't, he can't, like, go through those, like, little gaps because he's too fat, but he can, he can jump over obstacles, and he could, you know, run as fast as miles. Although Psychic has been severely damaged, he holds a certain level of intelligence, being able to track down Miles in the darkness by listening for him, or checking lockers to see if he's hiding inside him. So, 
if you if you saw by the first um, part you ever met Walker, um, well not not the first one, not I mean um, when you win the security control room, not the one when you threw him when he threw you out the window, but um, when he uh, it's called uh, uh, when you're in the security control room and you had to hide in the locker. He only checked one locker, so I think it's because. He's either retarded or he's just uh, his uh, you know he's. They say he's intelligent, but maybe it didn't come to him that he checked. You know, will have to check two lockers, so he didn't check two lockers. He just walked to the left, and then Miles ran away to go to the um, uh, the, the, the basement to restart the generator. Why can't I just use my damn night vision? I don't want to restart the fucking generator. In the basement. Hide in the locker. Don't try to fight. Oh, fuck. What's up, monster? How's it going? I'm doing fine, man. You're logging into Fortnite? What do you mean? How you doing, uh, monster? My twin. <laughs> it also seems to display at least a limited awareness of what's happening in the asylum. So Walker seems to keep trophies of his victims, as many severed heads are seen lined in the bookshelf in the administration's blocks library. So the administration blocks are a library. <laughs> so if you the the first part of the game, you see a bunch of heads. You you see a ton of heads. Those are all Chris Walker's is victims' heads. Name him whatever. Oh, uh, asshole. Um, your name is asshole. So, it's just oh my god. <laughs> that's that's just uh that's awesome. Oh my god. Okay, so that's the characteristics of Chris Walker. Um, after the security breach, uh, Walker roams the asylum, killing any people he sees as potential hosts for the wall rider staff and patients alike so um if you could tell by i mean if you could see the whistleblower um it was a prequel then it overlapped with outlast um it started the asylum and um you get to see chris walker for a little bit in the whistleblower um that's how it started the whistleblower the first part of it how the um you know everything went to shit in mount massive asylum you know um uh, the patients died uh, the not patients um the well patients did die but um the the stupid doctors died, um, you know, everything, the variants, which are the patients, um, so, many he headless co corpses are seen mainly in the administration blocks due to Walker's attempts as containment, so it says we have to contain it, as in, like, we have to stop the wall rider, I think? So, following the as asylum's riots, Markov sent a team of tactical operators in attempt to contain the situation, however, the PMCs were eventually overwhelmed and killed by the loose variants including Chris in the administration blocks the library. So so um one of the uh one of the uh what's called the freaking uh, the Murkoff uh the, the technical operators, one of the guys was Stevenson. Um he got impaled on an iron pole, leaving him for dead by Chris Walker. Um and as you can see, uh when you walk I mean when you yeah when you walk uh okay I'll stop. But um when you uh when you, uh, go in the library, he says, You have to get out, like, you have to get out, Chris, well, he killed us all, he, blah, 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 you have to, means, okay, I'll, I'll just show you the clip. <laughs> oh, shit! They killed us. They got out. The Wait, guys. he's... You can't fight them. Oh, you god damn it. But not long after the event, Miles arrived at the asylum and enters the same library, only to discover blood, bodies, and heads lined up on bookshelves. He also discovers Stephenson, impelled on an iron pail and sur seemingly dead. However, Stephenson wakes up briefly to warn and distress journalists about the dangers of the lurking asylum. With his dying bre breath, Stephenson, Stephenson warns Miles to get out while he still can before dying. So, um, if you don't know how Miles got to the asylum... Wayland Park, which was a former Murkoff executive, um, he, uh, he, um, he, he wanted, he, he thought this shit was suspicious in the, uh, in the asylum, so he wrote a letter to, uh, Miles, which is, he's a journalist, um, Miles got it, and Wayland got caught, 
by Jeremy Blair, and, you know, he got blah blah blah, you guys know the rest of the story. <laughs> After Miles leaves the library, uh, he spots Walker for the first time, um, so then Walker goes through that door, and then, um, <clears throat> And then he enters uh, another room, and then after passing by and attempting to squeak through a small gap, he is suddenly grabbed by Walker, who calls him Little Big, and throws him through a glass window. And he falls about 20 feet into the Eterium. So, Walker thought he killed Miles, but he didn't kill Miles. <laughs> so... Walker breaks into the security control room to look for Miles, but leaves when Miles hides in the locker. So Miles only checks, I mean, um, Walker only checks one locker while Miles is hiding in the other. Um, so not seen for a period of time, Walker's later shown ripping the head off of an employee in the asylum prison while speaking about containment. Soon afterward, Miles opens a decommitation gate, which Walker enters and breaks through the glass to the control room, forcing Miles to exit through an air vent. Busted out the window by an explosion, Miles is pursued by Walker by escapes by squeezing through a barricade. So, yeah, Walker basically stalks you the whole game, tries to kill you because he wants to end your suffering or he wants to contain it. But, um, I don't know. So, uh, then you go down to sewers and then he stalks you more, basically. Um, uh, he doesn't give up after, uh, Miles escapes again and stalks Miles in a large dock room completely filled with deep water and Miles esca again escapes using the ladder. So, Wa Walker once again attempts to kill Miles in the mail ward while he's busy turning the sprinklers on. Um, out in the courtyard when, Wiles is, M when Walker is patrolling, he comes very close to catching Miles, but is unable to fit through a small gap that Miles moves through. Miles sneaks past him to the way to meet Father Martin and he attempts to chase Miles one last time after Miles gets the elevator key, Miles barely manages to hide from him and rushes out into the hall to attempt to leave the asylum with via the elevator. When it's revealed that Father Martin tricked Miles into entering the underground lab where the Wall Rider's host, Billy Hope, resides, Miles is chased by the Wall Rider back the way he came. So, yeah, that's uh, that, that's basically the story. Um, I mean that no, that's not the end, but um. That's, that's some of the story, most of the story. So, um, upon opening the door, w Walker grabs Miles. So, Walker says, No escape. Or he says something like, Little pig, I got you now, no escape this time. No, he didn't say that, but something like that. Um, so, he, Walker grabs Miles and throws him through the ground, telling him he won't escape this time, and utters his nickname for Miles. Yeah, no escape, little pig. Um, unknowingly, having put himself in the path of charging Wall Rider, he is grabbed by the Wall Rider and sprayed away from Miles, slamming into a wall. So then, um, the Wall Rider kills Chris Walker by, uh, putting him, I mean, by, um, squishing him through an air van and then blood comes out and, you know, Walker dies. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it. So, Jesus Christ, um, that is the story of Outlast, um, so the now, as I said, the whistleblower, he makes a brief appearance in the prison after Jeremy hears a Chris screaming and bashing a door nearby. Jeremy explains, do me a favor and die here, Park. Do me a favor and die here, Park. Before running away, evading, eva avoiding Chris... Avoiding Chris, Wayland then makes his way down several hallways and squeezes through a tight gap, impossible, impassable by Walker. Wayland heads through the prison block, passing Father Martin, who is painting on the wall for miles, which reads, Down the train! Down the train! Wayland heads further down the prison block, trying to find a way of the administration block to escape. Just as Wayland finds his way through a dark courtier, Walk Walker reappears behind Park and chases him. Wayland makes his way down the corridors and jumps through a window. After he hits the counter, Walker is not seen again. So Walker only, like I said, makes a brief brief appearance in the Outlast the Whistleblower. Um, the other antagonists that make an appearance is um, uh, Frank Manera, is that how you say his name? And Eddie Gluskin. Um, well, and, and Jeremy Belair, but... <laughs> so, um... Yeah, shit, so Walker's personality, um, he's insanely obsessed with the security protocol and will go on mass murderous treks just to do what is good for the greater good. Uh, the fixation on the, the containment, like, the fixation on the containment, uh, from his military background, after comparing the situation from a slaughter, he begins to kill everyone in sight to order to make sure there is no host for the wall rider to possess. So, he's killing everyone. So the wall rider, if Billy dies, which he did die, um... Then there's n no other people to, you know, get hosted by the Wall Rider. But as we know, you know, um, we we get possessed by the Wall Rider and we get shot down by the uh, 
a SWAT team, and we the, then the Wall Rider attacks uh, the SWAT team and Wernickel or Wernicky, Wernicky. Wait, Doctor Wernicky. Yeah, Doctor. Yeah. Okay. Um. So Walker Dialogues reveals that he is somewhat calm, level-headed, and truly wants to do good, stating he must defeat the Wall Rider before it reaches the local town, and telling Miles he only wants to help. So. <laughs> Like I said, he he wants he wants to do good. He wants to kill everybody. That he wants to help to you know not have the wall rider have anyone to possess. So so, but either way, his unstable mental state and habit of ripping off and collecting heads provides he is actually insane. So, um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. Um. I'm not going to read the rest. If you guys want to read the le rest, I guess I'll leave the uh, description in the... I mean, the link in the description below. Um, um, but, but... But, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> shit. So, um, if you guys do want me to do another video of this, um, another video of someone like, you know, the Wall Rider, uh, the Variants, uh, the Twins, maybe Eddie Gluskin, uh, Miles, Blake, Lingerman from LS2, Marta, I don't know. What do you guys want me to do? If you guys do want me to do it, make sure you go ahead and smack a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. Hope you guys do have a good rest of your night. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.